preaching today is from the Gospel of Isaiah 40, uh, chapter 40, verses 1 to 11. God's people are comforted. Comfort, oh, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I said, what shall I cry? All people are grass. Their constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you up to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength. O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings, lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arms, his arm rules for him. His reward is with him, and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. The second reading is from Mark, chapter 1, verses 1 to 8, the proclamation of John the Baptist. In the beginning, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John, the baptizer, appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins, and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. Friends, let's bow in a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious God, as we hear your word and as we come to your table, we ask that you would prepare our hearts, that you would clear our minds of any distractions, that you would indeed encourage us to seek your presence and your peace uh, this day. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable on your sight, O God our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Friends, these days we are hearing many voices, aren't we? We're hearing the voices of our political leaders, uh, voices of our medical experts, indeed media, and yes, social media. And we have many messages from uh, these coming at us. And it is in an uncertain time and in a difficult season. And we are listening for some hope. We are listening for some comfort. We are listening, can I say, for some good news. Now, having said this, we are also becoming familiar with not just listening for good news, but also with the term fake news, which has really become a popular phrase in our time. And it really just speaks to anything that doesn't fit into the truth, maybe as we might see it. And so there is a growing skepticism, there is a cynicism that sometimes can affect our own thinking and our own behaviors, uh, believing that there is no good news or there is no one that we can really trust. And for some, it might also extend into the spiritual realm that there is no God. There is no God that cares for us. There is no God who has compassion for us. 
And so in many ways, uh, with this skepticism and with this cynicism, we're thrown back on ourselves to figure it all out. And if it doesn't fit into our truth, then it becomes sort of fake news. And this is sometimes tough. It is a difficult season. To, to use the analogy of today's scripture passage, we are in a wilderness time, a wilderness season, as we are traveling through this pandemic. And so the question that I want to sort of focus in on this morning is, you know, whose voice uh, do we listen to? Um, whose voice do we trust? Whose voice is really speaking the truth? Is there, in fact, good news for all people? What I found interesting as we were studying and as we heard Jan reading from uh, the Gospel of Mark, he begins his Gospel by saying this, the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. My friends, that's really Mark's style. Mark is known as one of the Gospel writers who is really straight and to the point. And we can imagine his first readers and his first listeners sort of sitting up as he begins his gospel, as he begins writing his gospel, as they begin hearing it. There is good news? What is that? What's the good news that we need to know and that we need to hear? And Mark is saying it all starts here. There is good news, good news of Jesus Christ, meaning Jesus the Messiah, the one who is from God, the Son of God. Now, what's interesting is that right at the beginning of Mark's gospel, in comparison to the other gospel writers, Mark is rather plain. He's not like Matthew or Luke. There are no angel visitations. There are no birth announcements. There are no manger scenes with magi and uh, shepherds worshiping Jesus. But for Mark, it begins in the wilderness. It begins with the voice of one known as John the Baptist, standing knee-deep in the muddy Jordan River. And John has a message to proclaim, and that is, prepare the way of the Lord. Make His paths straight. We believe that Mark's original congregation would understand the significance of these metaphors, the significance of the wilderness, the significance of the Jordan River, the significance of John the Baptist as being linked to the prophets of the Old Testament. Indeed, the quotes of the prophet Isaiah are all linked together, and they would understand uh, that context. For them, it would be a reminder of Israel's history. In fact, their ancestors' history, a history of enslavement that moves towards Exodus, a, a, a history of captivity, but also of freedom, a, a history of, of exile, but also of a promised homeland. They were reminders of God's covenant promise to bless them, even going back to Abraham, how God would lead them out of Egypt through the waters of the Red Sea, how God would provide for them through the wilderness wanderings with cloud and with fire. How God was with them as they crossed the Jordan River into the promised land. So when Mark begins his gospel and he begins in the wilderness and with John the Baptist and his prophetic message to prepare the way of the Lord. It is a story, it is a message that would be familiar. That it has echoes back into the Old Testament, back into Israel's history. And there is good news here. At least there is good news for Mark. And what he is saying to them and what he is saying to us is that God is breaking hundreds of years of prophetic silence. God's promises in the past are going to hold true. God has made a way in the past and God will make a way. God will prepare a way for his people even now. And not just for Israel, but for all people. Mark is writing this, and we can maybe even sense his enthusiasm that this is good news. Mark is saying to his congregation, Mark is saying to you and to me, it all starts here. God has not abandoned us. God has not let, left us to fend 
on our own. But God is continually coming to us. And God is going to come to us in a Messiah. In fact, God is going to come to us in the flesh, in Himself, in Jesus as the Son. There is a new exodus and a freedom to be believed in and to be embraced. And this is the beginning of the good news. But here is the question that they had to address and answer for themselves and also we too today. Would the people listen? Would the people hear? Would the people be prepared in their own hearts? Would they respond to this promise of the Lord's coming? Would they be ready for this coming Messiah? There is good news in the wilderness. Reading through the beginning of Mark's Gospel, there is an irony though. And the irony is that the people of Israel, in many ways, were not ready. They thought that they were going to get a certain kind of Messiah. Even the disciples had placed expectations on who Jesus as the Messiah should be. But Jesus did not meet their expectations. And it was difficult for them to sometimes understand, you know, what is Jesus doing? What is he about? He was a healer. And not a warrior. He was one who loved the sinner and didn't condemn them, but came and ate with them because they needed a Savior. It is for this reason that He said, I have come. He was one who came to suffer and to serve and not to seek any sort of political power. Even John the Baptist later on, uh, when he heard about Jesus' ministry, question whether or not he in fact had baptized the right Messiah. Are you the one or are we to wait for another one to come? So perhaps in this way, the good news is not necessarily defined by our expectations. But it is given to us and brought to us by a God who knows what we need. We need a Savior. We need a Savior to come and to prepare a way for our forgiveness and our freedom. A forgiveness and a freedom that even John himself recognized that he was in no position to give, but only to proclaim. As he says, as Mark records, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the straps of his sandals. Friends, I have baptized you with water. But he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In other words, what John was saying here is that this Messiah would not only simply change your life, in a sense, renew your life from being uh, one who had, was maybe distracted from the kingdom that God had called them to, even as the people of Israel. Not only that, but this Messiah would come and live in you and transform you. Live in us and transform us by the gift of His Holy Spirit. And of course, this is the good news, isn't it? It was still partially partially hidden uh, from John the Baptist at the time that he was in the wilderness and proclaiming this great message. It was hidden from even those who gathered and who came out uh, from Jerusalem and from Ju Judea into the wilderness to receive the baptism of repentance, to come before God with their lives. It was still partly hidden at that point, at the beginning, in the wilderness but it would soon be revealed in who Jesus was. My friends, Advent and Christmas is really about good news. Even in the wilderness of life. And sometimes God takes us and brings us out into the wilderness so that we can receive His peace and His presence, His forgiveness and His grace. Sometimes it is indeed about this good news that we are brought into the wildernesses of life, even within a pandemic, even within a hospital room, 
even within our own homes, maybe feeling isolated and alone, God's presence is there for us. This is the good news that we can have even today. It is about one who comes to bring us freedom from our sin. It is one who comes to bring us presence through the gift of His Holy Spirit. It is one who comes to prepare a way that we might inherit a new humanity and a new life. Is this not the good news for you and for me today? As it was for Mark and for that congregation that he wrote to. What is the voice that we are listening to today? Is not this the good news that we need to hear? Is this not the good news that you and I have, be, have been given? Listen to these words again. The first sentence of the Gospel of Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ the Son of God. My friends, is not that the truth that we find in Advent and in Christmas? And it all starts here. Friends, this morning, I want you to take a few moments now and come before God as God has prepared the way for us in Christ. That God has provided a peace for us in Christ. Friends, take a few moments now, and as this video plays, open your hearts once again to receive and to welcome Jesus into that place and into your heart, wherever you might be. Amen.